Everyone has that part of their yard that they don't want anyone else to see. Maybe it's at the back of your property or maybe it's the side yard of your house. For me, very conveniently, it was right in the front of my house. It took me six years to decide what to do, but it only took a few weeks to transform a really ugly part of my yard and an eyesore into this. A garden's a great solution for problem parts of your yard, and I have seven tips that will help you transform that unsightly part of your property into something beautiful and productive. So why did it take us six years to decide what to do? Well, this part of our yard is weird. When we bought the house, it was filled with gravel. And evidently, the people who lived here before us parked their boat here. This gravel is in many places more than a foot deep. It's also really ugly. It was going to be really cost prohibitive to have that gravel removed. There's also, I dug down and excavated, there's black plastic underneath that gravel. So just planting on top of it was not really an option. We also don't know what's underneath that. Given that they used to park boats and cars here, there's probably contamination from gasoline and oil and that kind of thing, which may have seeped into the soil. So all of that is to say, our weird spot in the yard just sat as kind of lumber storage and weeds until this fall. That's not ideal, <laughs> but that's how it worked out. So here are my seven tips so it won't take you six years to decide what to do like it did me. My first tip, set some goals. What do you want to achieve? Are you looking to have a wildlife garden, a cutting garden, a vegetable garden? That was my decision in the end. I, first of all, wanted this area to be clean and tidy. And I wanted a little more room to grow vegetables. We don't have a lot of space in the backyard where we're growing vegetables currently. So I thought this would be a good place. And I've always wanted to try a potager garden. And I felt like this would be a good place to give that style of gardening a try. Tip number two, study the light, the soil and the environmental factors before you begin. We didn't do a soil test here because we weren't going to deal with the native soil, but if we were planting in soil, I would have had a soil test done for sure. You can do that at your local county extension office usually, and it's a fantastic low cost tool. In terms of light, take pictures of the area at different times of the day, and then look at how the light changes. This area is largely sun, but it does have some good afternoon shade, which is, will be great in the heat of the summer. And then environmental factors. In this area, I'm going to have to deal with reflected heat because it's actually a strip between two concrete driveways, which means it's going to be hotter than usual, and I'll probably have to accommodate that. I also don't have good access to water for irrigation here. Um, so I'll be hand watering this or perhaps installing some kind of an Oya system here. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Those are things to think about when you're planning and also when you're budgeting. Number three, deal with the weeds first. You can pull them, absolutely. And that's what I did here because they're very loosely rooted into gravel. So I was able to just pull the weeds. But another really good technique that I have used in a variety of places in our yard is solarization. I actually use recycled billboards. Those billboards last a long time. And with solarization, what you do is you lay down black plastic. So I buy billboards that have black um, back sides to them, which you can choose. And lay down the black plastic and let it sit the best time to solarize in the Northern Hemisphere is to let that plastic sit pinned down from late May to September or October. That's not always the most attractive thing to do, but the heat buildup not only kills the weeds, but it also kills the weed seeds in the ground or in the soil there. And that is huge. That's a really good savings and will save you 
lots and lots of weeding in the future. So I highly recommend solarization. Another technique you can use if you're starting a new garden and you're going to be planting right in the ground is to do sheet mulching. I use sheet mulching a lot in my yard. It's a fantastic way to control weeds. Um, what you do is you lay down sheets of cardboard. I always use just old boxes. I often hold them down with landscaping staples, that way they don't blow away. And then you cover that with a good layer of compost. And then you can plant right into that. And the cardboard will decompose over time and leave you with lovely fresh soil and you've buried those weeds underneath there. Sheet mulching doesn't get rid of weed seeds in the way that solarization does, but if you're burying them deep enough, many of those seeds will only come up if you disturb the soil. My fourth tip is to plan your garden layout as if you were planning out the furniture in a room. Take measurements and then make a drawing or even build it in a program like SketchUp and plan out where you want things to be. If, if you have something already in place, like a gas meter or the corner of your house, be sure you draw that in so that you don't make a plan to put something there. Having a good drawing can help you plan how much soil you're going to need. It can help you calculate what the configuration for your raised bed should be. It's really an invaluable tool. Everything that you're going to put into that new garden is like a piece of furniture. And you need to know how big it's going to be and how big your room is. And that will help immensely in the end to achieve a really beautiful garden. If you think about how the grand gardens in Europe are laid out, they're divided into smaller pieces. Each piece might have a theme or a function or an idea. And you can do the same thing with your garden too. If the, if the area that you're trying to clean up is, feels too big, divide it into smaller spaces and then deal with it a little bit at a time. That way it's not so overwhelming too. Okay, tip number five, lay it out before you start. For our garden, we put together all of the beds laid them out before we filled them and then I lived with them for like a week to make sure that that was the layout I wanted. You could use cardboard boxes, you can draw on the ground with chalk, use spray paint on top of your billboard, however it is, but mark out to scale what that might feel like before you put anything permanent in the ground. Number six, shop your house and your yard before you go shopping anywhere. Look around, do you have things that you could repurpose or reuse? See if you have things before you go spend money. See if you have things that you can repurpose and reuse in this new garden. Also look at the plants you already have. Are there perennials that need to be divided? Are there shrubs that could be relocated? Those are great things to use to save money when you're planning a new garden as well. From our yard, we have a bunch of old red flagstone that was left from another project that we have repurposed and we often use them as stepping stones and that kind of thing. I'm certain they will be used in this garden eventually. And tip number seven, buy in bulk if you need to. There are some inexpensive ways to get landscaping materials if you need them. I, for example, ended up getting a bunch of mulch from a local arborist who dropped it off for free. In fact, it's so much that I've been able to offer it to my neighbors who have used it in their yards too. It's just shredded tree material and it was a great, easy, way to fill up the raised beds I was using. You can also go to a local landscaping supply company. They will often deliver things by the ton or by the yard, including stone and gravel and that kind of thing, which can help save you money as well. And soil. If you are going to order some soil, you want to make sure that you're getting the right kind of soil. Something that's highly enriched, for example, is not going to be a great soil for native perennials, but it would be fantastic for vegetables. And that's what I ended up choosing. So now I have all winter to dream and plan my potager garden. I've got seeds to order. I'll be starting things from seed come February and March. And by mid-May, this place should be pretty glorious. This is a big transformation from eyesore to epic, 
Let me know if you have questions about making a big transformation in your garden.